Hi everyone. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for uh, willing uh, to commit your time. I know everyone has a busy schedule uh, to help you us again uh, with this year's uh, Ag Commission. Um, I just want to briefly, I, um, I'm Don Mende. I'm the new the, the biggest Deputy Director for Research and Development. I just started in June, so everything's kind of new to me, so I just kind of wanted to introduce myself a little bit. I came from the private sector. My, my background is basically in finance. I've been in banking and trust and investments, you know, for pretty much been a part of 20 years. Uh, and so I'm learning a lot, and I just, again, I want to thank everyone for, um, for joining us today and, you know, willing to come to your time. I know it's a lot, and we, you know, really value your guys' opinions and everything. Um, you know, there's some refreshments uh, and some wonderful co co coffee. Thanks to Laurie. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Please help yourself. Uh, bathrooms, uh, if you guys don't know, are uh, in the middle of the building in the corner over there. Um, I guess before we start, the mayor's going to come down a little bit, but just, just I don't know if everyone knows each other, but just in case, uh, for my sake too, um, can we just do a quick introduction of each, of each other or yourself? Um, Rod, can you start, please? I'm Rod Jennifer. Uh, currently, I manage uh, SHAC, the Synergistic Hawaii Agriculture Council. The three members are the uh, Hawaii Papaya Industry Association, the Hawaii Coffee Association, and the Hawaii uh, Nursery and Farm Culture Association. And what SHAC does is we acquire some grants for these three organizations. So we've gotten, uh, right now we have a million dollars in grants, uh, 500 for marketing. Uh, we just finished up about 330,000 for the CBD mitigation. We have another 200,000 for the CBD. Uh, so that's what Shaq's about. I'm not agriculture oriented except for helping these organizations. My previous life, uh, I used to be a manager for uh, Marshall Grumman doing uh, computer embedded military systems. Thank you. My name is Lori Obra. I'm the owner of Rusty Hawaiian from Kau. Marissa Harmian. I'm a land manager with Kamehameha Schools for East Hawaii, managing um, the state's agricultural properties. My name is David Tarnas from Waimea. I'm a private consultant working in permitting, government affairs related to different sectors of the agriculture industry, including forestry, aquaculture, production ag, uh, ranching. So uh, I uh, cover a wide variety of places from high altitude to deep ocean. Uh, so I'm eager to participate. Thanks. Morning, I'm Sotero Lagoon. I manage Kona Pacific Farmers Cooperative. It's a coffee cooperative, actually the oldest one in the country. My name is Troy Kiwalanui. I'm the owner and operator of OK Farms here in Hilo. I also represent uh, Ed Olson and his agricultural lands here on the Big Island. That includes the Hamako Macadamia factory and also the Kau Coffee Mill. I'm Nina Tanabe. I'm with Pacific Food Technology. I'm the owner and I do private food consulting. Tim Richards, I'm a, uh, my background is veterinarian and cattle ranching. Primarily, most of my vet practice is livestock. And I'm staff. Uh, I'm a special projects person at the, at the Department of Research and Development, Jeff Melrose, and i um, been carrying the ag conversation for the last uh, six, eight months for the, for the county and uh, well, they have to replace the uh, the new ag specialist. So, um, Dot, you want to? I am Dot uh, Botelo Kahili, and I am the private secretary for the Department of Research and Development. And I am uh, going to be taking the minutes for this minute meetings and try to set you all up in Frisha's absence. Frisha Basilio was um, uh, the person doing this. Uh, she is out of maternity leave and having a great time raising her little baby boy. So it's a joy to do this. It's great to meet you all. Thank you. Can we just quick introduce the um, uh, Troy's uh, Troy's Troy's crush? <laughs> my wife, Ala. Aloha. Uh, my mom, Rachel. And my boss, Edmund Olson. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah. Good. Uh, let me just start. May I just do an overview? Um, why don't you get on, get Margaret Masunaga, our corporation counsel, on the line? Okay. She's going to appear by telephone. Okay. Is Wynn working? Oh, I'm sorry. Fly on the wall. <laughs> Carrie Marks, member of the public. Okay. <laughs> fly on the wall. Apparently, <laughs> an invisible fly on the wall. Come on, he knew I was here, right? Just a quick, some quick housekeeping for you folks in your um, binders. And it seems like a very large binder, but I believe that oh, it will be filled up uh, shortly. Um, e each meeting will have an agenda, and there, going forward, we will have minutes. So then you can go ahead and place them where they where they uh, have a tab for. There, there is this pink um, forms you'll find under mileage, and the county government can and will. Um, reimburse you for mileage and you know so if you can fill up one we would like to suggest that you don't turn one in for every trip maybe make it a couple if that's possible and if you ever run out ask me and I'll refill this for you um, let's see what else uh, the first page uh, is the directory that I have created with each of your information and while we're waiting for the mayor um, Maybe I'm going to pass this around and just make sure that all this information is accurate. Please line out and I will make the necessary changes. Um, let's see. Uh, just for your information, Tane Dana uh, is off out of the state and he will be a part of the uh, commission. Uh, we will get him back on track uh, come October. And then Mr. Mike Robinson, he's also going to be returning and he also is not available. And when the time comes um, for a, a chairperson to be um, uh, nominated and, and preside over the meeting, I have some of his availabilities for when you uh, try to schedule your standing meeting. Um, yeah, Eric's not available. And one more. And excuse me, Eric yeah. Tanoy is not available as well today, but he did um, commit and he <coughs> will be joining us as well. If you have any questions, you have my email address and um, I have a question. Yes. Was that the last time we filled out, we got parking permits. Oh, will oh, we be having that? Great. I still have my old one, but change car. Yes, let me find that out yeah. for you. That's a great question. Um, we do have issues here, and especially on a day when we also right. have council, it's hard to find parking and right. they'll have to feed your meter. So let me definitely get some information okay. for you on that. So the things we had from last time don't work. I better go off the meter then. I think it should work. It should work. I think it should work as long as your vehicle. Um, same thing. Same. 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 Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And um, I believe we got Margaret Masunaga on the line now. She's the Corporation Council of uh, County Attorney assigned to this uh, commission. Hi. Hi, Margaret. Good morning. Can everybody hear? I'm sorry, this is kind of like we couldn't get the other phone to work, so we're doing our conference call for my cell phone right now. Okay. Um, I guess just a real quick review of the agenda. Um, the, you know, the mayor's going to come in, and then I guess between the commission and yourself, you, um, you uh, elect a, a chair and a vice chair uh, to preside over the meeting going forward. Uh, and then if we have any statements from the public, we'll go, you know, we'll take that. Uh, and then we'll do a quick review of uh, an adoption of the rules and procedures. Uh, and then uh, Margaret will go over a quick overview of the legal context and, uh, of the commission and such I law. And then uh, a quick overview, uh, a quick discussion rather of the way of the county agriculture program and then but determine the next time and place for the meeting and then, and then adjourn it. So, um, I'll, I guess, uh, I was going to have Jeff, when he gets back in, he'll do a quick overview of the commission. Um, the mayor's going to do at the actual swearing in. So, everyone has already um, you know, signed the, the old act to me already, and, and then we got the um, notary done. So, we're actually good for that. Um, 
Does anyone have any questions before we start, please? I guess we could have uh, Margaret's part, yeah? That doesn't have to be before the first game, okay. Mm -hmm. No? Well, so we'll see. You want to go on an overview of the yeah yeah okay the old, the old this year yeah okay well, um, I think you folks probably know better than I do except for the two new folks what the role of the commission is um, generally speaking this is an advisory commission to the mayor um, and we look for your thoughts and also your contributions to the research and development um, agricultural program so that there is we do have a program within uh, R&D that focuses on agriculture and look, uh, there's a place on the agenda and I'll talk more about what that looks like or what I observe it at this point and we can fill in um, in terms of what that program looks like um, and I think you know your, your role is to advise the mayor specifically and um, I know there were lots of kinds of advice over the last term. Some of it you felt like may have not, not necessarily come back with clarity on you, and we'll kind of continue to try and get some clarity about how to, you know, what the, what kind of information is the most useful to the mayor. And you can certainly talk to him briefly when he comes down here in a minute on that topic. So um, we would meet. Monthly, uh, it's up to you folks how often you meet, so you can choose how to do that. You can choose to rotate where you meet, and that's, these are your decisions. You can choose to go to places and to do um, site inspections on things if you want to do that. And um, we will um, kind of do whatever it is we can do to support you in that process. But I think you're really the eyes and ears for agriculture and key issues for us out there. And um, would appreciate the conversations that come from that. So uh, with that, I think that's just a simple, any comments or questions from the folks who've been here before, want to add new thoughts to that or clarity you have from before? David? Well, I don't know where you want to dive into this now or? No, we'll talk about the Ag program later on, but. Um, yeah, because there's a variety of things that we did provide for each other and for the mayor, uh, and keeping each other informed about different activities during legislative session, keeping people informed about bills related to agriculture moving through the state legislature. Uh, and sometimes uh, we were also giving advice on county agriculture initiatives, not just the programs, but also CIP projects that are related to agriculture that the county is working on as well, whether it's the Ag Park or the CIP for the slaughterhouse, or we just want to be helpful, and so we did a variety of things, and so it'd be nice to get some feedback as to what was helpful and what would be something you'd want to continue, and what would you want to see change from the administration standpoint, because we really are serving the mayor, and we'd like to be responsive to his needs. You know, in the best of all worlds, the last couple of days, I would have taken all of your agendas and put them all in one place and, and looked at your comments so I could have had all of that piece in one place, but for the last three or four days, the entire public record system that that stuff's stored in has been down and it's been down again today. So uh, uh, <clears throat> I've looked through much of that material, but not in the most recent period of time, but I really think it's important that, you know, in, in your own thinking, think of what are the things that you really wanted to hear some thoughts on and um, try our best to kind of get that clarity back to you and figure out how best to communicate with the mayor. And it's also an opportunity when, when he's down here in a minute to do the swearing in that you can uh, you know, raise some of those questions or just ask him what he thinks he'd like to see from the group most specifically. Um, we're really not, I don't think, looking for specific involvement in a lot of the detailed stuff that's going on here today, leg you know, legislative stuff. I kind of hate to put this group in the middle of, say, the GMO conversation unless you choose to go there. I mean, we're not looking to say that's where you want to go. But those are just complex 
pieces that you may or may not choose to want to take on. So that's just an example of things that you might uh, talk amongst yourself about, but <coughs> whether you need to get in the middle of that okay. process is another one. It's up to you. Um, Maybe just for the quick benefit of our new members, I think we, we kind of had three large conversations, I think, over the term of the last commission. The first one we focused on reviewing the county's ag plan and giving comments on that. Then we moved to a discussion on important ag lands. And then before the commission ended, I think we were trying to find ways to be helpful and we had started um, inviting uh, certain industry leaders to each meeting so we could find out what was the biggest issue in coffee. And then we had a papaya person and we had the bee guy, um, Gus from South Kona come so that I think where we were headed was trying to maybe make recommendations to the mayor for each um, specific sector in the ag industry, what would, what's the number one thing that would help them get to the next point and then our commission ended. So we were kind of trying to find ways to be helpful and that's what our last discussion was. We have a regulatory He's reform. speaking over there too. Oh, he is? Yeah, he is. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We had a regulatory reform, a regulatory committee or something, I forget what we call it. Remember Steve? Yeah. Uh, and you worked on that. And to come up with suggestions, and there was a top recommendation to actually work with DPW mm -hmm. on grading grubbing related to Lobi, you know, these small ponds. And, and that was an initiative that we took forward because of a particular expertise of one of our commissioners, uh, uh, Steve Bowles, who's no longer on the commission. Um, but that, we took only as far as DPW uh, wanted it, and then the commission finished its work. And so those are some of the other things we kept on sort of going in different paths. That's why it would be really good to hear with all of those initiatives, you know, whether from the mayor or may not be from him, maybe from Randy, in, and his reflection on the experience that he had with the commission might give us some feedback as to what worked and what didn't. You know, what which, what should we keep the same and what should we change? Uh, there were some good rec some real good conversations on how do you uh, limit also the building permit uh, weight on things like water tanks over six feet and mm -hmm. things that just don't make a lot of sense for. Well, you know, requirements. And stuff. Remember that that came from a state law that was passed in the legislature that told the counties that they had to come up with their list of ag-related projects that would be exempt from building permits, and the county had to come up with that list. And we were making suggestions from each sector uh, what would be a type of agricultural uh, improvement that should be exempt, uh, and. We were providing that input. Uh, that's a planning department thing, and we only took it so far, and we didn't. We don't even know what happened to it. Um, and, and that's certainly a pending issue because there was a date certain that had to be met. Uh, and if the county didn't provide that input, then there was a default list uh, that would be implemented uh, if the county didn't come up with that list. And so that's in the, a bill that was passed last session, and I think it's December is the deadline. If I remember correctly. Okay. So that's a, a list of exempt, uh, list exempt of, ag improvements. Yep. Yes. Okay. And you're saying that that list would have been at the planning department. Well, it's a county. The, the legislature passed the bill saying the county shall identify these, or if they don't, then here's the list. So I would suspect that in the county administration, it would be planning department would take the lead. That's what we assume. Okay. Do you guys need some specific recommendations on that? Yeah, yeah. We, we did a couple of different times. Yeah, uh, we got the um, the different groups that talk and submit. And I can't remember exactly who they submitted it to, but um, some of it came through here. I think some of it went to, I want to say the planning, I don't remember exactly. So. I thought, I mean, we, were, we had come up with a protocol for communicating with different agencies to try to make sure we followed. Oh, oh Mayor. I can like try to keep to around here. <laughs> <laughs> kick over there. Well, I must keep kick Kato and how to tackle over there. Oh, all right. Move your cover, man. Completely. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, we can talk more about this later on in the agenda. Yeah, but I had to see it. 
um, in agriculture right now, very, very challenging, very emotional issues. Um, we, need, we need those with the experience and expertise to help guide us in that. You know, I get invitations, hey, bro, GMO guys, like me with you. Hey, the anti-GMO guys, like me with you. I tell them both, no. I don't like hearing from advocates. I, I sift the information myself. I'm an advocate myself. You know, I can sit down and testify before the board last week, uh, this past week, earlier, on Nani Law. And they're telling me, yeah, but this attorney said this, and then the attorney said, hey, with all due respect, that attorney is fighting for his bank. That attorney is fighting for the trustee. You know what I mean? Ed was there. He said, I'm fighting for 187,000 people back on my island who are being held economic hostage. You know, I'm an attorney too. I can be black, white, white, black. I come in my legal counsel, you cannot do that. Why can't I cannot do that? Because it is this, that. I go, what about this, this, that? Oh, well, maybe then. <laughs> so maybe can then. So why are you telling me no can? Why are you telling me, no, no, you cannot, for real. So if I do this, guarantee somebody will come on the other side and file something contrary. Oh no, somebody going. So it's not guarantees then. Right? You know, so it is shades. And that's why I look to you guys. If an agriculture issue come up or something pop up, I will look to you guys for talking. Hey, are you going to say, you know, which, what is the best decision in the best interest of the county? This is a great commission. If you guys have all, I mean, you guys all know each other, but very diverse, very different. That's geographically balanced, gender balanced, uh, commodity balanced. Um, and hopefully everybody bring their best. And I, I truly believe that everybody in this room, goal, objective, um, is to support agriculture, to keep those agriculture jobs and agricultural productions meaningful. Um, we can use words like sustainability all we like, but if the average age of a farm on this island is 59, like they tell me, nothing sustainable about that. Um, you know, we cannot have sustainable ag if we're not sustaining the farmers. If we're not changing the next generation. If we're not raising not just crops, but raising farmers too. Um, and so, you know, anytime I get on call and I can help, I'll try to be there. You know, we've got resources and uh, R&D specifically for agriculture. Um, you know, so we're not, you know, the last few years, we all acknowledge it's been incredibly economically challenging. Nobody know that more than you guys. Uh, but now, uh, Jeff and you know Don, they tell me to get more money in the ag. They don't know what to do with. They just don't know what to do with them. So, uh, you know, so you guys, I'm like surprised, right? You guys can find them. But <laughs> um, for real, yeah. You know, like scramble at the end of the year. Oh, we gotta spend this money at the end of the fiscal because it's sitting around, rather strategically allocated today. Uh, you know, might not be a lot, but anytime we strategically allocate limited resources, we can maximize the benefit. For so, that's all I had. Sorry for taking up you guys' time. If I may ask everybody to please stand up and get sworn in and take the oath of office for Hawaii County Agricultural uh, Advisory Commission. <coughs> if I may respectfully uh, request that everyone please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, please state your name. I, 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 I always wait for somebody to say, please state your name. <laughs> okay. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Hawaii and anything that Mayor Billy can hope, sorry, and that I will faithfully discharge my duties as a member. As a member of the Hawaii County Agricultural Advisory Commission. Of the Hawaii County Agricultural Advisory Commission. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. And thank you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can throw any questions for the mayor before he runs out, just in terms of uh, some of you have been around before in the conversation. Some of got any thoughts you want to share? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Oh, he's an easy guy. Come on. Larry, it was so cool. I go to Larry's place to honor her, recognize her for an incredible cold coffee, and I expected this huge, amazing place. And 
in a backyard. <laughs> I never like think I have a proclamation, I went down, you know, I'm like, must be a coffee farm for produce this incredible product, you know. Yeah. You know, you look at it, you know, and he won that one, yeah, you look at it, you hey, boo, are you growing the best coffee? Cool. That's not me, but just the elevation in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so humble. That's one thing you notice in the farmers, yeah, right? So humble. All hard workers, though. But you don't see too much farmers, ranchers, talk too much. They are very humble, but all hard workers. So pretty, that's the one common thread you always notice. So, anybody get any questions? Well, I, I can just, we, we were having a conversation before you arrived, Mayor, and as former members of the commission, we wanted to get some feedback from you as to what you felt was useful that we did and things you wanted to keep, the things you wanted to change, because we were trying a lot of different things to provide you with input. Marissa went through our list of working on... You know, you get a chair. Why don't you no, 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 I feel bad standing up lately. <laughs> I mean, have a seat in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I stand up, yeah, yeah. I feel kind of... You know, we, we, we work to give you input on the agricultural plan, and yeah. so that, uh, I think, was revised in it and adopted. And then we were giving some input on, uh, uh, you know, there's several bills that were going through legislature. One of them was... Yeah. You know, what what uh, agriculture related uh, improvements should be exempt from building code? So we gave some input on that. Um, help me out here. Uh, you know, we were doing we did a variety of other things, uh, and you know, gave input on county administered CIP projects for agriculture, like the ag park or or the the slaughterhouse. So we were just trying to be helpful. Uh, and so if you could give us uh, or ask. Randy or others to give us feedback as to what worked and what didn't, what do you want to keep the same, what do you want to change, what can we do to best serve you, because that's really why we're here. Great question. Um, your guys' uh, input and support on direct county involvement, Kapolena, right, Agriculture Park, the rendering plant in Pawilo, uh, being able to speak with a voice, um, at the state legislature, um, you know, you have 51 representatives, 21, 25 senators up there, 76 people. So when you speak, it's one thing for R&D, Randy, Jeff, or to testify. It's another thing to say this is, you know, what our commission, agricultural, farmers, ranches, said or support. It always amplifies, it always enhances the ability to effectively advocate mm -hmm. at the ledge. Um, you know, says a politician, um, you know, like I implore uh, my department heads, um, I guess if I could ask for anything, I know you guys have done it, is, you know, I, I would love the specific thing, the low-hanging fruit we can accomplish, you know, that legislation we can meaningfully enact. Right now we have a very open-minded, supportive council for agriculture. Right? We could work with me, you guys need to know okay, it's facial expression. <laughs> I, saw some, I saw some movement though. But uh, I really believe that if we had very targeted, strategic, specific legislation that we could get a receptive audience there. Um, I would really uh, welcome you know, specific, hey, we could, if we could get this from our planning department, it would be very helpful. If public works would do this for farmers, it would be very helpful. Uh, if our water commission, you know, and our water department looked at things this way for our farmers, that would be very helpful. Um, in other words, things within our control and our direct purview in the county very helpful. I mean, we, we, you know, it's always about cooperation, collaboration, teamwork, and bottom line. Anything good requires that. But things federal now, it's almost like, you know, absent Senator Inouye, you know, who we love respect. You know, like this critical habitat designation. You know, I mean, it's spot not, you know, 18,000 acres, like in You know, it's, it's just a <coughs> fish and wildlife. Like, not much. Yo, we're almost so helpless. It's like we went from being able to pick up the phone and have direct federal impact, 
you know, or, or get direct federal support, cooperation, USDA, Fish and Wildlife. Now it's like, I feel like the Federated States of Micronesia. So, you know what I mean? So if we require federal involvement and participation, it's kind of like, oh, that's what, you know what I mean? That's going to require time. I'm not quite sure what kind of measurable it will be able to get with it. Specific period of time, mm -hmm. but if it's like, hey, you know what the county not doing, or you know what the county should be doing more of, you know what water should do, you know, I'm, I won't welcome that, you know, um, you know, like being alerted, never know about the ag water rates they wanted to make them single residential, but being alerted, that was like, oh, hey, why would you guys do? Oh, we figure, you know, say, what do you mean you figure? Do you guys go talk to the farmers? Oh, well, you know, we've this issue been ongoing for. Did you go talk to the farmers? Oh. Wow. How come? You know, then we get appointments, you guys get recommendations of people willing to serve on the Water Commission, you know, who represent farmers' interests. Happy to do that. I know we've got a couple farm bureau reps now, but they won't be coming off, you know, we're going to have to put more people on. So, if you ask me, you know, because the, the goal is at the end of the day, it's not what we said was going to let come. It's what we did that mattered. And so I would welcome specific things we could do, you know, that, you know, they change this law, expand that, redefine that, provide some money for support. You know, I mean, no more million dollars, but get a couple hundred thousand dollars sitting there. You know, so like when wild farms come, hey, if you get 25 grand, county, we can get 25 grand from Oha. And we can train 10 families in Waimea. Shoot, I put 25 grand for that. Hey, you know, a couple then, uh, right, with Koala Center. Hey, you guys drop county, you drop, you know, it's another 25 at no, no, that would be 25. 25. Over three years, huh? Yeah. 75. But it matches on federal grant to train our farmers. Right? I'm like, okay, we can do that. You know, so it's not no more get. But, you know, in 25 increments, you can, you know, 50, we can do a couple projects. So if you guys know where uh, we can leverage funds, you know where that 25 becomes 75. Well, you know, a match, you need match for a state university or a federal grant, then the county can participate in that. So I would look to you guys to, to move that funds. You know, we specifically put the money there to do stuff so that I don't go wrong. You know, if I gotta take the bean for raising taxes, then not on the farmer, but you know, a rich guy. <laughs> nah, nah, I just kidding. But um, okay, well, that helps. That yeah. Helps. So specific stuff like that would be helpful. Maybe I'll ask a follow-up question that I know on the minds of those who were in the last commission. What's the best way for us to communicate with you? Is it through RD to you? Because we serve you as the mayor's appointment. You know, how often do they meet? Decide, we used to meet monthly. Well, the previous time. commission, mm -hmm. we did meet monthly. So you know what? Make sure that every other meeting I come. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys meet on specific days. I can we haven't them. decided any of that. Oh, okay, location. okay. Well, you guys let me know then. I'll come every other meeting directly. Easier that way. Mm -hmm. Instead Which, of communicating up to you guys, shouldn't have to do that. If you guys serve in the county and stuff. Mayor's Commission. I should be here directly because, and I think regular meetings increases accountability. You know, so if you guys say, hey, so man, who's making a big body and you said you're going to help us, we told you two meetings ago that we needed this done, well, where are we? You know, nice to have regular interval communication because I noticed that helps. You know, it might be a week before a meeting. Hey, what I told them last time I was going to do? I said, you said you was going to do this. Already combination. <laughs> Hurry up, make it happen. <laughs> you know, I gotta walk in there and honor the farmers, you know. But you know, just to have that communication, regular communication. I think I think it also supports all of you in that um, I'll be better aware of the ongoing communication and finding out where I can provide support or assistance or facility, you know, things. So I'll come to every other meeting. If in fact you guys meet Monday. You know, we get a few years, you guys, hey, I will inform, you know, um, you know, privileged to be here again, you know, uh, you know, a second chance from your community to serve, you know, you know, like, 
you know, like racist, you know, like, bro, I'm like, you know, I'm calm. So I like to be able to see you guys in four or five years from now and shake hands and go, hey, thanks. Thanks for helping with that. That way you look and you look away and make the right thing. There's someone in your office that we could check with on what your standing meetings are so we don't just uh R and D. Yeah, we can we can cash the schedule down. Let's just uh have have Don and Doc can work with uh Paulette and coordinate my schedule. Okay Doc, that are you? I mean, with a law, you know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll designate dogs to coordinate my schedule. She can do that, easy. And then, so I'll make sure I, I got these. It's just a great group of guys, you guys. Know. Look around, I feel, I feel stoked that you know. When you get good people, we need to help you yeah. out. It's a two way street, right? You know, it cannot only be one way. So if, if we pass a, a motion, a resolution we wanted you to do something, would then go through, in the meantime, through R&D, just to get that information to you directly. Yes. And then you'll be at yeah. At every they other can meeting. get them right to me. Yeah. But then you guys pass your resolution and you know suggest and recommend something, right. and please send them right up. So and then we would yeah. do it. And then that way, when I come, I'm prepared as to what it is and why it is, and so I can either push behind it or okay, tell me some more about this. Yeah. You know. And sometimes during legislative session, there's a quick turnaround. Yeah, no, yeah, so in fact, again, that, can, that would be through R and D. I'll tell you right now, I don't want to sit around and, and push anything back. If you guys push them, I wouldn't support them. Uh, what I'm going to do? Ask the smart guys to do something, and then say, "No, I think I know better." <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, you have to pick your battles at the ledge. Right, right, right. So we'll okay. give input to R and D through R and D to you. Are you doing legislative side. stuff? Still lobbying. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say about it. I mean, you send it up to me. You get that jujitsu action over there too. But we are advisory to you. First time I meet first time I meet Representative David Titus. I thought he was a staff but it's like twenty years ago. My first job out of college was at the legislature, walking around acting like the man. Hey, how's it? Hey, hello, hey, how's it, brother? Hey, what you doing, bro? What you doing? Well, David, hey, nice to meet you, brother David. Hey, so what you do? Oh, you're a representative. <laughs> 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 They're acting like it's one of the better. What's up, cousin? What you doing? So I yes I I am still involved, but we also realize that we're advisory to yeah, you, yeah. and so we don't want to go off and do something on our own. No, I, I would I would, uh, I would give you guys my email, and uh, so when you send to them, you give them to them, give them my email. So at least I CC me, put me on the communication. I, I read everything. I don't respond to everything, mm -hmm. but I read everything. I appreciate that. That just gives us a starting point as to what our process is and our scope of work. So this has been helpful. Thank you. I'm sure I forgot that. So what else were you doing? Who's on the phone? Tim, I'll send you an email. Yeah. You know, I've noticed it's been some time and frustration, so I think I just have to be able to get stuff done. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks, you guys. Very good. Sure thing. Have a great day, you guys. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Aloha. All right, watch and thanks for serving that. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for those cats. Watch out for the cats. <laughs> Clearly, I've been successful in spite of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Does anybody need a break? Shall we take a Ten minutes, got some coffee, yes, on my break. Oh, come on, get the whole family here. Okay. You go for it. Yeah. 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 Hey, Margaret, just yeah. on. Okay, we're going to get back in. We're going to do Margaret first before the election chair. Okay. Uh, no, we'll do the election first. And wait for Tim to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just waiting for us to get back in. What we're going to do is have the election of the, the chair and vice chair, right? Vice chair, too, right? Yeah. And then we'll go from there. And so, what, do you open the floor for nomination? Yeah, it's what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a motion to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a motion to...
vice chair, and then we'll postpone the chair decision until next meeting because there's a couple of people who aren't here that really are ready to be chair and to turn the mic. Oh, okay. okay. So um, I'm going to make a motion to, uh, to nominate Tim as vice chair, and we'll see who else might do that, and then we'll vote on that. And then, then if that works, then Tim can run today's meeting and we'll have a chair election next week. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just so you know. This. Okay. <coughs> You mean it's already solved? Great. Yes. Yeah. We tried. Well, it's just one step. One step. Okay, Mario and everybody's back. So uh, before we continue the meeting, uh, and I guess the next uh, topic on the agenda is to, for the uh, election of the chairperson and the vice chair. Um, this is David Tarnas, uh, Commissioner. I'd like to move to nominate Tim Richards as vice chair and that we postpone the chair election to the next meeting when we have the three other members here who are not here today. Okay. Okay. I second that motion. Okay. Um, there's a motion and a second for discussion. Any discussion? Tim, are you willing? Yeah, I'm willing. Yeah, just, um, I know I am willing. Um, one of the things is when you leave a room, you may end up chairman or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that being said, if someone else is interested in vice chair, that is fine with me. I'm willing to do it. Uh, but if our new uh, commissioner, commissioners are interested, I'm very open to that as well. So uh, if you guys are interested, or you know, my time is very limited. In fact, I travel a lot too. If I can just let the, no the new commissioners know, so we had um, three chairs previously. So Eric Tanoy was our first chair. And I was vice chair. And then um, Kathy, Kathy Pomeroy and was, was chair, chair, and I was vice chair. Okay. And then I was chair, and Tingata was vice chair um, last year before our chair ended. So there's three of us that have cycled through as chairs already. Okay. That's all the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, thank you. chair. Presiding chair. I assume since we function under Robert's rule of order, the vice chair takes over. That's right. In the absence yeah. of the chair. So, with that, um, <clears throat> thank you, everybody, and look forward to working with you. Uh, I'll echo what the mayor said. Uh, in our last commission, I guess we referred to it as our last term. So, this is actually a meeting I look forward to, and I think we actually did get some really good stuff done. Uh, it's great hearing from the mayor and actually the commitment having the mayor mm -hmm. come in every other meeting. That's going to be working great for us to get things going. Uh, if I heard him, I believe I understood, he says, go for that low hanging fruit. What does the county have direct supervision and oversight? And that's things we can recommend through the ag uh, community coming from that side. That's also what I, I heard him say that when we are having other commissions or committees that are uh, people are coming up to their term limit and they need to be replaced I think maybe we can actually help them find some people coming from the ag community that we may be able to recommend us some names and help them find that because trying to find people I'm sure is difficult and we're more connected in different ag commodities uh, than uh, probably anybody else so we may be able to help them with that that being said you know we can offer that see who's interested in that Sticking to the agenda, public statement from um, statements from the public. You know, okay. no? Thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. Uh, review and adoption rules of practice and procedure. So, do we need to adopt Robert's rules? Is that what this is for? No, we actually have uh, in the binder. I think is uh, the rules of practice and procedure that we have previously adopted. Yeah. We yeah. modified it slightly oh, okay. in the last commission. And so this, I would assume, this is the version that we had left. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you want, yeah, Jeff. You know, um, <coughs> the only portion that has changed is the purpose on is the page of, under Rule Three, Purpose, mm -hmm. and Rule Four, uh, uh, Duties and Responsibilities, and um, simply looked at it and uh, added a couple of things. In the past, you. One of the first things that was on your our duties and responsibilities was to look at the ag plan and to make recommendations on what you did. So, um, so we took that one out, and I added into 
now that we've had both an ag development plan and the food self-sufficiency baseline, both of which give us uh, insights into the process of, of uh, agriculture on the island and directions on those. Um, I added that into the purpose so that that's a reference. And um, I think we split. So yeah, in A and B, I think we, we just split the two up a little bit. There's a very small um, kind of editorial changes on those. And um, let me put you on hold a second here. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we're going to adopt this, we need a motion and a second to approve. Is that correct? Yes, you do. Okay. Okay. So okay you want to do that before we go to conversation? David yeah. Tarnas moves to approve the rules of practice and procedure of our commission. And then a second. A second. Second, so I have a motion and a second now open for discussion. Continue, please. Okay, sorry, thank you. Um, so, I mean, I, all other things on these rules are the same. I would just look at those pieces and see if they are not inconsistent. We did send those up to the mayor and his office for review. Um, they, I think I changed one word from explore to promote or something like that, but um, would be good actually to have the red line copy with me today. But, um, it really just kind of cleaned up the first one, which was you were to come in to look at the development, the ag development plan, which you've done, and, uh, and it is an adopted document. And uh, and I think the B, which is to develop recommendations and policies to improve food self-reliance on the island, which is a, another spin on this context, is just kind of focus. The first one focuses on ag generally, and the second one on, you know, this, what, is it, what is it can we do that make a, a, a more resilient food scenario for the big one? I just have one technical non-substantive change, and I haven't read through the whole thing, but it looks like there's a typo on Rule 4F, complementary. I think you meant complementary, E, C O N P L E. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, what is the will of the commission? Are you comfortable in calling for the question? Or do people want a few minutes to read through this, or do you want to table it until next meeting? My sense is we should probably get this approved today since we don't have a lot of stuff on the agenda right now, and at least it'll give us a, a direction to go. Uh, as being previous in these few changes that Jeff has pointed out, uh, I'm comfortable with calling for the question, but again, that's something uh, I the commission feel comfortable with. No objection. Any objection? Okay, we're going to the commissioners. I'd be curious if you have a concern. Okay, hearing none, uh, are we ready for the question? Yes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, contrary, same sign. Okay, we've adopted that. Overview of legal context, uh, Sunshine Law. Can you explain it's at our corporate council? Hi, Margaret. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're at the uh, context of commission and Sunshine Law portion. Okay, can everybody get a uh, handout from the Office of Information Practices regarding Sunshine Law? And a handout, I think it was like two pages, um, just from the Office of Information Practice about what boards and board members can and cannot do. We're having that out right now. This is the second portion okay. she's just mentioning. So I, I think it's best if um, anybody would like me to be with them, I can do a very quick one hour overview about um, the Sunshine Law. I do have a, a PowerPoint presentation that I just hand out and I go over with each um, member if they want um, like a refresher course. And I can, I think that's probably the easiest way because a lot of it is just um, common sense rules um, and you just kind of have to be reminded it's nothing, you know, to be scared about. It's just, you know, part of open government. And if anybody is interested in meeting with me 
I come to Hilo, like I'll be in Hilo on Friday, but I can, you know, work with you on uh, the best time, whether it's in Hilo or Kona or Waimea, wherever. Um, that would probably be the easiest way. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that now is I'm actually driving to another meeting right now, so I don't, you know, want to get distracted about talking about the sunshine law right now. Question, if we've been through a sunshine uh, law workshop before, uh, no need to do it again? I mean, has there been any significant changes uh, in the last couple of years? Okay, did you hear that? Um, the question is that, yeah. oh, is it, no. no. I didn't hear the question. Oh, okay, yeah. the question was that if, if they had gone through a Sunshine Law training recently, uh, within the last couple of years, the last couple of years, has anything changed significantly that they would need to take another one? No, um, I think what the Office of Information Practices have done is they just clarified um, some common questions that board members have. But in terms of the substantive law, it, it's basically the same. Okay, thanks. So would the new members, new commissioners, be attending that class? Um, like, yeah. Like we did. You know, yeah, yeah. So you know what, then? No, why don't we take a poll? Uh, who wants to take a uh, class like that? And then we can go ahead and work with everyone's schedule and try to schedule something with Margaret. Is that okay, Margaret? Oh, yeah. And, you know, even if it's just an individual, you know, meeting with one member at a time, I can um, do that as well. I've done okay. that with other um, committees and commissions um, of the County of Hawaii, and it works pretty well, um, I think, even if it's you know, one other person because that you can just ask me any questions that you have doubts about and um, it goes pretty fast, like no more than an hour. Okay, okay, we'll do that then. We'll find out who wants to um, yeah. take a and then you can give them my um, cell phone number and my um, email and then I can, you know, work with them individually um, if that's the most convenient. Okay. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so hearing that, uh, I know previously, the previous commissioners, we've been through the Sunshine Law. Mm -hmm. New commissioners, um, what are your feelings on that? My feeling is I'd like to read it before Schedule I something. make the commitment or something like that because I, right now I don't have any formulation of questions or anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we can yeah. Defer that, uh, and it, it's not pressing. That, that's not something when we were in the commission last time. We just got into it within the first couple of months, so we can read through this and talk story about it at the next meeting. So with that, sorry, we'll go ahead and table that conversation with the next one. So if we can put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. All right. Okay. Uh, overview and discussion of Hawaii County Ag Program and related initiatives. That does not sound like a short conversation. <laughs> I, can, I can shorten it down a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, here's a, you know, I just got into the process of, um, you know, understanding what the county's ag program was, uh, kind of beginning of the year. Uh, so I, I kind of see it from that perspective. Don's new, so I probably outside of. Uh, Dot uh, have seen it the most specifically, but um, here's a couple of things. Let me hand out a couple of quick um, handouts. Um, one is just a map, and I want to talk about it briefly, but this kind of was something I put together for a presentation I had to do at the university of what are the things that the um, County of Hawaii's R Department of R&D does for agriculture. So, this is just a quick sample to give a general feel of what it, what it is we do. Uh, probably the two, the two big pieces that the county does, one is down in the corner, the Soil and Water Conservation District financial support. The county gives money to the uh, Soil and Water Conservation Districts, and I think this year was somewhere around 
$300,000 or in that range that is um, used to help um, soil and water conservation districts uh, develop farm plans for farmers because otherwise they got to go through the building permit. If they have a farm plan, they can move through grading and grubbing and land clearing fairly simply. So that's an important piece of the puzzle and it just funds a direct service through SWCDs uh, around the island to provide those services. That's an important one. We also have an enterprise zone program that allows for businesses, ag businesses and a range of businesses to get a variety of tax breaks if they're inside, you know, most ag lands are in enterprise zone areas. Uh, so there are a number of participants uh, around the island that uh, take advantage of those tax advantages for uh, you know, reduced taxes you know, through the enterprise zone program. The rest of these little dots that go around the island capture a couple of different kinds of things we do. Some of what we do comes out of you know, Hawaii Tourism Authority money that we support things like the Kau, uh, you know, the coffee festival or certain kinds of the, uh, the Taste of the Range kind of events that are supporting of events. We have an annual program that begins in when, uh, when did we put out the uh, applications for our... Usually in January or February of the and then we award them in, in May, June. June. Right. So there's a budget, it uh, was about $200,000 this year, but we take requests from ag-related uh, nonprofits. They need to be a nonprofit organization um, or you know, they can be a, a commodity group to support different kinds of programs. We don't necessarily design those, they come to us. So we had about 40 of those, we funded about 19 of them. They range from a number of different farmer training programs that are ongoing. The mayor mentioned two of them, the Wild Farms uh, program where they're working with homestead farmers, they're building greenhouses on farm in the best of ag lands in, on the island up there in Waimea. And, uh, training folks to use greenhouse production for a variety of different kinds of crops. The Kohala Centers had a project for training new farmers in Hamakua, the Hilo Hamakua Coast Development, Community Development Corp has for several years, had a very inexpensive but quite interesting effort to open up to the whole of the Hilo Hamakua Coast opportunities to go to different farms and learn what different farmers are doing and that gets good participation. Um, those are the kinds of proposals we get on the training program. We focus on a fair amount of commodity support groups. For instance, we, so we fund the papaya industry for some of their supported, their marketing efforts as they go out to um, Japan market that uh, Rod's particularly involved with. There's also, we uh, provide funds to the foliage industry as they start to rebuild their industry after the uh, depression or the recession. They've gone to the Philadelphia Flower Show, they've done a variety of those kinds of activities that we help to fund. Uh, there's uh, ongoing conferences, the Nurserymen's, the Export Nursery Association, the Orchid uh, displays, those kinds of things, which basically what we're trying to do is support the, these commodity group efforts to promote their products locally and in some cases externally the tropical fruit growers has a big conference it's actually on Oahu this year but it's you know drawing a lot of mainland attention as well um, and then uh, there are a couple of efforts for like the community effort in North Kohala that's going to eat local buy local kinds of efforts that have been going on in North Kohala uh, this year actually we went out and sought um, um, some work on the Little Red Fire Ant. We hadn't put a lot of money in that particular area, so I worked with the Little Red, with the Fire Ant, the Ant Lab, Cass Vanderwood, um, and they're going to do uh, an outreach program, particularly in West Hawaii. We're going to target that into West Hawaii so that it's an area where we don't have that much ant currently, and maybe we can um, help to suppress that and it's primarily an outreach education how do you know how do you know you've got it how do you deal with it when you got it um, 
effort. So, um, but that was one I actually went out and kind of encouraged them to come to us for money so we could do that. But I think that's an important one. And then there's a little bit of research. Uh, we tended to get a number of things from the university, some of it, um, you know, fairly academic, and we're trying to figure out ways that are, you know, to select things that have particular utility. So this year, for instance, you know, a small, you know, eight ten thousand dollars for somebody doing sweet potato research, looking to find ways to bring in uh, varieties of sweet potato that that don't. There's a virus in the sweet potato crop here, and we keep replanting and replanting the same material all the time. Uh, we export about 12 million pounds of sweet potato out of South Hilo annually. So, um, and one of the things you see in that virus is the purple going away, it kind of turns a little bit less than purple. So they're trying to figure out ways to bring, if they can bring it and come up with an, another variety that maybe is more resistant to that uh, problem. So it's a small amount. And then there's some seed, oyster seed project that's been going on at the Aquaculture uh, Center down here in Keokaha to grow out oyster seed because we have a particular advantage uh, in our waters that the rest of the country uh, struggles with getting oyster seed up in, in what's often virus-laden waters that we can overcome and sell that. So the university has been working on that. So we have a number of university-related kinds of stuff in a small, fairly small amount. This year we actually funded um, through the forest industry uh, Institute uh, Christmas tree project up on DHHL land, hoping that maybe there's a way to break uh, some production at a high level of these kind of high elevation of uh, uh, Norfolk, not Norfolk, so of regular pine trees, the smelling Christmas tree. So they're going to explore that and see how long um, to see if they can come up with some of that. So um, we've also moved other people's money, be it state um, or some of our own to water system improvements like in Kau or the money that's been spent currently under construction at the Pauvila Slaughterhouse. So that's just a range of things. We have a leasing program at Kapolena, which is still kind of getting off its feet. But the uh, that's kind of the breadth of where our monies have been spent, essentially. Uh, one other thing I wanted to share with you was that for the last, um, this and this conversation starts kind of how some of the more important ones start with myself and Don Strainy at the farmer's market one day, well, just interested in food and how we continue to build the food attention at the university level. And so we did a workshop. Um, Marissa was there. Well, this is the notes that came from that session. But this was an effort to try and bring, it was my, the R&D, University of Hawaii, Department of Ag, and the College of Tropical Ag's um, and Forestry and Natural Resources Group, we sat down together, tried to figure out how would we have a better conversation about how we best support food production on the island. And uh, we decided the first thing to do was to listen to the people who provide those supports. And we invited about a dozen or more agencies, including the College of Tropical Ag, Dean from Honolulu, and NRCS, and a bunch of others, Koala Center, to talk about what they provide and then we brought in another 15 or so ranchers and farmers to talk back to them. So there was a back and forth conversation on that topic to try and say, what are you, what are we doing right, and what what could be some next steps? So uh, these minutes are kind of the boil down of that conversation, and at the end of it, there's a list of next steps that really were kind of negotiated between. Don Strain in the College for Tropical Act to say, okay, so we're listening, we're still trying to hear what we should be doing, but here's some things we could do now. And so these are things that uh, uh, are emerging partly out of that collaborative conversation. One is recognition of feed stock and the need to get uh, some kind of inexpensive animal feed if we're going to grow our cattle poultry, like that. finding some way to get back to that conversation on creating a, an affordable feed material is important and the university is going to start to bring resources to bear on that conversation. Um, there are a lot of ag training programs going on uh, around the state, multiple here, there's a couple that we fund, and um, um, 
there is a HCC program that's going around the state, uh, around the island now. Um, and there's an opportunity to kind of bring those conversations together a little bit so we can learn what people are getting or not getting out of that. And we have a conversation that's going on with, um, in the Puna community, uh, brought in partly by Gregor Iligan, Councilman Iligan, uh, but with the papaya growers and the flower growers, Eric and the Papaya Association has been involved in this, to figure out how do you help those groups of people. If you're going to provide a program and you're going to provide it to the papaya industry, you need to understand how the papaya industry workers work. And so if you're going to go there, you've got to know how to throw the net kind of where those fish lie. Same with the orchid or flower growing community. So Small Business Development Corp is taking the lead right now, trying to come up with a program, and we've said we help support that program as it emerges. But again, it's one of a number of these kind of farmer training, capacity building programs. Um, and the Ag Incubator Program, which is out of Honolulu, has kind of said they'd help to organize that, and maybe they'll do a conference of that. Of folks who are doing this so that we can learn okay, what works, what, what gets traction, what material seems to resonate for what kinds of farmers. Is this a cultural practices type training? It's partly cultural. Um, I think that's going to be part of it. SDBC's focus is really the business side of the, that operation. Um, the cultural practice has to be very specifically commodity-based conversations. So the foliage, uh, the flower, those guys have that program going on within their commodity group. And then this is kind of an add-on to that. But obviously, you need to know something about the cultural practices before you can really do a good business program. Right. Because you just don't you can talk over the topic a lot. So, um, and that there is an interest in kind of small business agriculture, I mean, you know, sustainability, uh, organics and the like. That's a rising tide and we hear it a lot. Um, at the moment, the Kohala Center is taking a lead in this process and they've got a conference in October and they pulled together a working group of organic farmers, and they're going to do a conference in October, end of October, at the King Kamehameha Hotel. And they're trying to figure out how to get this group to be more cohesive, because it tends to be a series of you know, voices, but not, and everything from how do you get better, you know, what do you do? how do you keep building nutrition, and where do you get the, where's the material coming from, and how do you do this successfully, and how do you get, they're not an organized group by any means, but they have a very strong voice and they're showing up actively in some of the events that we're seeing, um, you know, some of the GMO and, you know, pesticide, anti-pesticide stuff. And the last thing that came out of that was really the recognition that CTAR has, you know, it's, it's been defunded over the years. It's got less funding now than it had when the sugar industry was, was running and fewer people could be out on, on the ground. And they tend to um, drift into areas of funding. So when biofuels becomes a big issue, a lot of guys go into biofuels. And part of the struggle is to get them back into the food support structure so that people are right there doing, who are doing food and they got a problem in their field, they can raise up the problem and go right to you know, find somebody to help solve it. That's a tough one for the university because it's a funding issue but it is one that they will, um, they're looking to bring in, ex, I mean, bring in expertise um, and not, uh, not just say nobody's here, but we'll bring in targeted expertise on top of issues. So that's just kind of the issues that came out of that conversation. You know, so, one of the issues I have with UH is that the CTAR or Extension Agent uh, program has migrated to Manoa. Yeah. So even if the agents are here, they really report to Manoa. They don't report to like Russell Nagata. He has no control over any of his agents. So we as industry have little uh, impact on what they do. You know, that's one of the big issues we've seen in like the last three years. We saw the same thing actually with the federal, the NRCS agent. They wanted to move the grazing specialist office from Big Island to Honolulu. Mm -hmm. well, why would you have a grazing specialist in Honolulu? That mm -hmm. made no sense. So cattle industry um, banded together and they revisited the idea and left it back on the side. But I definitely hear what you're saying. That is a concern. Field agents need to be in the field. 
That's right. And so, they need to report to someone yeah. here. Yeah. But like I said, they, they're doing away with that, and the thing, the feeling is that they want the public to do everything online, so you don't have field agents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the person has to go online to find information. Yeah, you don't deal with a human. Uh, in the interest of time, um, Jeff, thanks for the that overview. A uh, couple of things. Is this the document that you wrote? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's it called? Oh, kind of, all I know is this your document. Sufficiency yeah. study. Uh, this document, if you haven't read it, I suggest you read it. Uh, it is an excellent thing, especially for this commission. I know it's available to us in an electronic form, and we can actually get some copies from the new commissioners. I, I brought two for the new commission. Did others get hard copies of this? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. Because uh, we actually uh, copied it ourselves and are selling it here for five dollars a copy. So, oh, well. if, huh? <laughs> no, no, these are for you. Uh, but that uh, the public can pick them up, and they've been going pretty actively. People come in, and it's. Um, just, just, I don't think Jeff's going to say this, but I think this won an award as far as um, the publication. It's probably one of the best government uh, documents I've ever read. And I read it cover to cover. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah, you did with your pants down. I that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> but actually, it's a great thing to look at and from a baseline for our county. So as, if, as a commission functioning towards our self-reliance, it's a great place to get started. Uh, and with that, what I'd like to ask, could you send out an electronic form to the commission as well, just so we have it uh, for the commissioners? Um, for me, it's easy. In addition to that, and I'm going to stray from the agenda a minute. Um, last commission, some of us voted for electronic minutes rather than having the hard copy. It's a safe paper for the county, and it's better for me. So can we do that program again? Is that all right? Uh, I don't know if we have to ask permission or just make it so. I guess it's a... The old commissioners already said what our process is just asking the new ones which way they prefer to receive the minutes. That's fine. Right. Electronically, that means that you would be bringing your... The, the send, send it on an email or something? Yeah, send yeah. an email. Yeah. So either we print it and bring it ourselves or we'll bring a laptop and yeah. use yeah. it. I think only Laurie and I elected to have our hard copy. <laughs> <laughs> would you still like to remain to have your hard copy provided? Yeah. Okay. Would yes. you like to have your hard copy provided? No, you can send an email as long as uh, because then it's a electronic is fine with me. Active thing for me. I, I read my email. If I have to search your website for the minutes, oh, yeah. right. A lot of times I don't do that. Okay. It comes okay. as an email to okay. us. So. Okay, great. We still can do that electronically and save paper. Great. Uh, one of the things is for this just remind me of this for communication again, specifically for the new commissioners. When we get sent an email from Department of Research, uh, we are supposed to respond, not respond as a group. Uh, we're supposed to respond individually because of the Sunshine Law. And um, sometimes we respond as a group. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to communicate directly just to probably DOT, I guess we'll be communicating to. And it has to do with meeting notification, things like that. Um, that's just one of the things that we stumbled through the last commission. Vice Chair, also if we as members want to send something out to the other members, don't send it directly, send it to DOT, and then DOT would send it out to everybody. And that's okay yes. to communicate that way. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, getting down to determining determination next time, place, meeting. Sure. All right, Vice Chair, just one last thing. If everyone who hasn't already read the County Agricultural Plan, I would really encourage you to read it or reread it, just refresh yourself. We, it is, it's a lot of good things that are in that agricultural plan and agricultural development plan. And so if we can just refresh your memory of it, your familiarity with it, and then we can use that to go forward as well. So Actually, Doc, could you send it out as well? Too? Yes. Before we move on, can I add something to Absolutely. You know, Jeff's thing? One of the things we did is we did a market research in Canada and found out that the maximum residual level in Canada was less than the U.S. MRL is. What is the maximum residual level? It's the maximum residual level on your fruit or item that a country will accept. So if your level of pesticide, a certain pesticide goes above that, they can reject the fruit. Okay. We had only now, if I on, on the Canada list, US list was, was about 20. 
and it's because of the rotation of the pesticides because papaya is a uh, all year long we don't rest so part of the regimen was to rotate the pesticides so that there's no immunization occurring and I brought it up to HDOA because I thought it was a statewide problem and they said they didn't have the resource to help the fire industry so I had to fund my own uh, project so we hired Brian Christie who was doing it for the uh, hops and the blueberries so we tagged along with the other small commodity to move papaya forward okay but I think it's still a statewide problem so if we start uh, initiating expansion of agriculture eventually it has to be exported so if you go into foreign countries the regulation of that foreign country becomes very critical to us. And if we don't pay attention to that, we may be growing products that has no sale value. You know, and I just wanted to bring that up because we did run across that in papaya. Just a quick question. So what would you what would you say needs to be done about that? Do um, you need a database of what are the state what the national residual levels of different marketplaces or what's the that I can I can get I'm a director on the US uh, Agriculture Export Development Council Brian Christie was hired to put together that national database of MRLs for all the commodities okay Hawaii may not be on there as yet because we're so specialized in our crop you know, none of our crops are commonplace production on the mainland. So that mechanism is there for the database to be developed. Okay. Uh, you have to do that or not you won't be able to export. When we went to Canada three years ago, Brazil, all Brazilian papayas were out of Canada, except for Caliban because of MRL issues. You know, and I thought it was very important to take a proactive role, and you have to because we've been working on this problem for three years. We may get it uh, standardized with the U.S., and this was all through, uh, you know, the agricultural agreements that the countries have. So until you do that. You don't want to be caught and say, well, you can't ship tomorrow. You, know? you might want to bring this issue and put it on yeah. the agenda for them. Actually, that's what we're getting close to. You bring up a very good point on, uh, concerning the, the homework that I'm going to sign for the next deal. I don't want to cut you off, but um, uh, what I want to do as we move forward, this is on the heels of the overview that Jeff gave us. You'll be receiving both the, his report and the um, the ag plan with that and the direction of the commission it was interesting the the first commission because this was the inaugural commission it had never been done before and we sort of wrote our direction uh, for the first commission now for this one what I'd like to ask each commissioner to do and then when we get get our chair uh, we'll firm this up but figure out what direct direction you believe what areas that we need to focus on as a commission. Right, you, you highlight something that uh, if we don't do the homework ahead of time, we may grow something that's not worth it that's or not worth anything. So that's an area it sounds like we need to, to focus on. Uh, but every, each commissioner, identify what you think may be a direction we need to go and then put on the agenda for next meeting that we have a discussion as far as the commission direction for the next year. And that's something we can start working on. Uh, one of the things also that we can't discuss something, this is the part that we stumbled on. Most business people are used to figuring out what they need to talk about, and then you talk about it. Unfortunately, in this um, sunshine law, we have to figure out what we want to talk about, put it on an agenda, and talk about it next time. And so that's why we try and put as much as we can on the agenda and keep adding things to it so we can put a lot to talk about it next time. And that's just something moving forward. So with that, like I said, I'd like to ask you to 
to think about what direction we're going to take this. Um, is there any other comments concerning the ag programs or the ag direction or the ag plan or anything like that before you get Just on? Just a real quick, Vice Chair. I wondered if, as a briefing material for the Commission, could we get information from County R&D about as you've described, Jeff, the, the projects that you have going right now, sort of the county initiatives that you're doing, just so we sort of we know the lay of the land when it comes to what are the county agricultural projects, agricultural initiatives, uh, and if that way we're up to speed on that. If there's anything that is in writing, if you could send it to us, that would be great. A summary of some sort would be great. Yeah, and yeah remember that these things are largely individuals co coming, I mean, from the funding of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. These are things that, you know, there was a competitive review of a bunch and we sure. said yes to a couple. So that, is that the list you're talking well, about? Well, that's one list is the, the county grants. The other is, uh, I think you've got the Capulena Ag Park, you've got the Slaughterhouse Rendering Plan, and I don't know other agriculture related projects that are CIP. You know, those, those are the sort of things that if, if you could tell us about it, then we'd be aware so that we're up to speed. Because you know, we want to be able to be responsive to the department. Yeah, so we're asking for a summary of those initiatives. I think it's basically what I mean, it's just a good list. I mean, I, you know, been updated on couple and the the slaughterhouses moving forward. There's some other. Um, well, it may not even be an list. update on all of it. It's just a list, so we know what the universe is, and then we could ask yeah. next meeting, uh, you know, for specific updates on specific items. So I'm not asking you to come up with a whole update on all of the projects now, but rather just a list, so we know what is the universe. What is the yeah, that's good. What is this uh, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, the other thing, the um, soil and water conservation, if I recall right, the, the funding was given to the county through research and development, and that's administered through soil and water conservation. Is that how it's done now? Right. Uh, right. And I know there's a discussion <clears throat> if the budgets were going to be uh, distributed equally amongst all the, the districts or if they were going to be prorated based upon participation or something like that. Just an update of where we are with the soil and water conservation or uh, Again, summary, just real, real brief, so we have an understanding of that. You're talking about how the money's dispersed within those organizations? Well, I, I think, like you said, there's a $300,000 total budget, and that was given to each district, and there, the conversation at the time was, let's say Ka'u was going to have a whole bunch of uh, uh, projects ongoing, and so they needed a higher amount of funding versus, say, Kona, for instance. Um, they only have one or two projects. And so the question, if I recall right, and help me out, commissioners, was uh, how the county is distributing that funding. Is it being equally, and then they work it out if they need to borrow funds, or however the case might be? Yeah, that, and, that I'm not sure, because I think, like, there's one that, like, three of them <coughs> combine collectively, and make one at collective ass, and just pull them individually. So we can find that out. Yeah, just as you do. Um, again, so as we can kind of help out and move forward, um, so we have a better understanding of how that's being handled, because I think that could be oh. beneficial for us. Okay, any other comments, commissioners? Vice Chair, maybe I could welcome our council representative, Margaret Louie. Thank you for coming, Councilman. All right. So, um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think what you said is true. That that, that money goes to a, a series of different. I mean, there are a couple of different. Individual sure. contracts, yeah. right? And they they are clumped together. Oh. We'll look at that. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll figure sure. out. So yeah, what you want to do is to see how that brings together. Yeah, Thank just you know. uh, again, you know, for trying to make some, uh, some okay. recommendations, understanding what that process is, because sure. I know that was still uh, being formulated towards the end of the last commission. So from a agenda perspective, that's just an update on existing projects that yeah. we can provide you, and then you can have an opportunity to assess them in a general way. Right, correct. So that would be another point on the agenda for next meeting. Yeah. Vice Chair, could we also get, what's the latest on the hiring of the Ag Specialist? Yeah. Okay. That's another agenda item. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, so with that, uh, next place in time for meetings. May I interrupt? Yes. May I go ahead and compile uh, the uh, draft agenda and send it to your attention? Sure. 
and then from there we'll, we'll uh, get approval and disperse it. Yeah, one other thing I think we should probably just have another agenda item, general updates, because I'm sure there's going to be some stuff in there that, as we're putting this all together, um, just make sure we have that general update in there. Okay. So, yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you. Okay, so with that, uh, I'll take a, a quick deviation here. Councilman, would you like to make any comments? I would have liked to have known this was going to be going on. There's very little communication here from your end. I'd like to know. I didn't think that the, uh, uh, I think the GMO conversations are healthy. Adult conversation shouldn't be listed here as uh, a divisive in the farm community and that it's important discussion. And I realize there's a difference in opinion, but I think it's how, I think it also provides a platform for other issues and discussions and bigger picture and not necessarily um, okay, how do we just... Anyway, thank you very much for... Are you reading? Um, what? She's reading the notes of the Ag Summit. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying... Um, I. Anyway, um, no, thank you for asking. Um, I appreciate that this is going on and um, I hope to be apprised and I think that um, we ought to consider just what is the, the amount of interest of the GMO um, is also indicative of the uh, can residents' interest in about food and what they eat and agriculture and um, I hope that we can use it not only to address that issue but also to take some of that momentum um, towards pick what is food sustainability, does it involve not just how much food, but how we take care of our soil, how we do things for current generations and future generations. So look at it as even if there are differences of opinion as an opportunity for the whole community to be involved in these important decisions. Thank you. Um, yeah, this meeting day is our organization, and we're just getting the um, yeah. sworn in and getting going, and I'm sure that will be part of our conversations in the future. Uh, any other comments before we get to the, the final term of the next meeting? Okay, um, so with this, um, last commission we had monthly meetings, and I think probably as we move into this, we should continue that, unless people have direction differently. Uh, I would say a monthly meeting, the mayor is committed to uh, attending, so we need to be sensitive to his schedule, and so with that, identifying a standing uh, it is probably going to be a little bit difficult not until we do some checking. Um, Maybe we should just pick next meeting only and then do a longer term uh, yeah, scheduling. Yeah, that's probably the best. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, David, so let's go ahead and do that. Pick the next meeting about a month from now. And one of the things on that, <laughs> we'll be selecting the um, standing meeting date after that. Uh, in the past, what we did was we rotated locations of the meeting, Hilo, Waimea, and Kona, and we just continue that rotation. But depending on the mayor, we may want to do uh, Hilo, Waimea, Hilo, Kona, or we may just want to have all the meetings here. That's a little information. And we won't make that determination until the next meeting as well. So as part of your homework as well, please think on that. So with that, uh, people want to look at their schedules and see what might be available for your next meeting. Any comments from um, Michael or uh, the mayor's usually in Kona on Tuesdays. So, okay. You know that that's something to consider. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, Mr. Mike Robinson states that Mondays and Thursdays are not good for him on okay. any week, apparently. And um, Mr. Data didn't have any preference except that he was going to be out uh, off um, out of state 16th to the 25th of this month. Um, now the only thing that I can think of is just getting a location and, and if we if I go ahead and we pick a date and I can go ahead and get some get that room for that date that's great in the event not then I would have to um, just email you all with that information. 
Okay, so <clears throat> Mondays and Thursdays are off from my, that leaves Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, Friday is typically not a great day. Wednesday, right. I go to the farmer's market. Okay, so that's right. backing us into Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday the 29th. Does that work for most people? Uh -huh. Are you looking for Tuesdays in general? Yeah, just Tuesdays yes. in general. Is that I'd like it to not be on the council. <clears throat> the council uh, meeting on um, every two, Tuesday? No, two yeah. Tuesdays. So Tuesday the 22nd is the council meeting? Um, uh, October 22nd? Is that possible? I think it's the um, 15th and 1st. So, so October 22nd would be would okay. conflict with the council. Is that a possible opening for other members? <clears throat> Tuesday, October 22nd? 22nd. Um, I will be at a meeting with U.S. Animal Health. Oh, so that, that won't work. How about whoever you mentioned? Somebody said they weren't available that week, so that's why I said the 29th. Oh, oh no, that's just for September. Oh, that was for yes. September. Um, what are people's availability on the for October? I'm going on October. Oh, October. Possible dates because we yeah. still have some commissioners right. who, you know, might be able to. Okay, so could you also send that out? Uh, we're looking for Tuesdays. Um, to see availability, and if everybody's, I mean, it's a big enough group that everybody's not going to be able to right. make every meeting. As long as we get a quorum. As long as we get a quorum. So if we can send that out, request and then respond as as early as convenience, but that'd be available. So would you suggest we just put a couple of dates down there, like the 22nd, 29th? Fifth, and let people all just kind of see what's best yeah. for them. Yeah. And you focus on Tuesdays. Tuesdays right now, uh, as Monday, Thursdays are not for Mike. Wednesday is not for Lori. So. Um, and Fridays are not good. And Fridays are just not good for you. <laughs> <Tuesday. laughs> so no, it's for Tuesdays. Something that we'd like to consider is the fact that there may be a opportunity for a video conferencing. Have you folks the last? Um, I think at the, very end, at the very end, Prisha had brought that up, that possibility of doing conference calling, so, uh, I mean, video conferencing, so we wouldn't have to go to Kona and vice versa. But that was... That was uh, then it becomes then it comes yeah. back. Um, there is some opportunity for that, but it all depends on the group. Yeah. If yeah. You, yeah. you feel that there's a better uh, working relationship at a table, and that's how we will go. Actually, what we'll do is we'll um, defer to put that on the agenda for next meeting as well. Um, and we'll put the chair. <clears throat> okay, so then what we'll do is we'll put out a, a request for a date for the next meeting. Uh, I've given you some things to think about between now and then. Is there anything else to come before the commission before we call for adjournment? I would like to say that I look forward to working with the group as the uh, group discussed. It's actually kind of a fun commission to be involved in. Get some good things and great to meet the new commissioners. Great to meet you guys. So, any other comments, questions, concerns? No. If not, uh, I have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. <coughs> okay. Stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Don and Jeff. Thank you very much. I do have a, a something that's not necessarily for this. Uh, it's just an update. I circulated the wrong one earlier. <laughs> this is the current um, uh, directory. If you could please just make make any changes or okay that. Oh. Sorry about that.